Job chapter 13. Job is still talking. Lo, my eye, Job, have seen all this. Everything you guys are talking about. My ear has heard and understood it. I understand. I've seen it. What ye know, his three friends, the same do I know also. I am not inferior unto you. You guys have told me nothing new. I didn't get anything on what you said. Now I said there is some doctrine in what these three men say, but not for Job. Not for Job. Surely I would speak to the Almighty God and desire to reason with God. I, I want to speak to God. I don't want to speak to you. I already said in chapter 12, you know, I call upon God and you answer. Again, in chapter 13, I want to speak to God and it will happen in chapter uh, 40. Job's had it with these guys. And we still got many chapters left of these three. But ye, here we go, ye are forgers, the only time that word shows up, of lies. You're liars. And I had a battle Saturday with the DJ at the farmer's market, and you ought not have said those things you said to him. That's what Job did. Job proclaimed who they were in truth, that you're liars. Paul, Jesus, and, and, the, and many times in the Bible, they called out the deceivers, they called out the liars, and named them names and said what they've done wrong. And when somebody comes up to me and says, well, I'm Baptist, I'm not going to leave it at that. I'm going to tell you that won't get you saved. And one, one time a couple weeks ago, Catholic Church, says, that ain't going to save you. That's not with the Bible. You have never studied your Bible. Now, you may think I'm mean and cruel, but I'm stating a fact. And the fact is, today, the truth is, sanctifying uh, the truth, thy word is true. People think the truth is mean and rotten and cruel. It's not. Wouldn't it be good to tell, you know, you got a, a, a deadly spider crawling on your face. So, uh, uh, leave me alone. Well, fine. Job has called them liars. In the count of Job, people think Job is cruel. Ye, ye, the three men, ye, the three men, are all physicians of no value. You're quacks. Here's the expression comes from. You come to help me, and as physicians, you've done me no good. You're a quack. And you know something like that, and it's the truth? Tell them to your face. <laughs> You're a quack. We got to prove it. Oh, that ye would all together hold your peace. Shut up. Don't say any more. I've had enough of you guys. Knock it off. Be quiet. <laughs> I want to speak to God. And just look at chapter 15, verse 1 real quick. It says, then answer Eliphaz. Joe goes on chapter 14. Chapter 15, Eliphaz speaks. They won't listen. <laughs> you ever had somebody like that? You're talking to them. It's like, you know what? You're not doing me no good. I, I, it, it's, you be quiet. And they don't. And they keep talking. It's like, ah, what can I do? And you're sitting there praying, Lord God, how we end this conversation. You ever been like that? That's what Job is at right now. Oh, that ye would all together hold your peace and it should be your wisdom. You know what your wisdom is? You know what he's saying? You be quiet. <laughs> you want to be wise? Yeah, shut up. And Job is not being cruel. He's being honest. I tell people many things the truth and they take it as you're rude and cruel and mean and ugly. Hear now my reasoning. All right, I've been listening to you guys. Okay, my turn. And hearken to the pleading of my lips. That's the first time pleading shows up. Will you speak wickedly for God? 
Whoa. Just call them liars. You're lying. You're false prophets in the name of God. And talk deceitfully for him. Again, Job said, I call upon the Almighty and you guys answered. You're liars. And there'll be many who come to you, maybe good intentions, I don't know. And they're going to try to help you out and they're going to do more harm than good. People don't realize there was a expression growing up that says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. They have never known a wife who's been battered by her husband's words. And those words leave scars for years, if not the whole lifetime. You know what these words are going to leave? They're going to leave scars in Job. Job is going to doubt God by what they've said. Maybe, I, you know. So, Job is at it. So, will ye accept his person? Will you contend for God? You're going to fight with God. With, you're going to fight with God in God's stead against me. You're the one that speaks holy for God. That's what he's telling them. You're the ambassador of God. Is it good that he, God, should search you out? Yeah, that's very good. Try me, O oh Lord. See if there's any sin in me. Or as one man mocketh, that's the first time that word shows up, another do ye so mock him, God? Now, that one of them has been accusing Job of mockery and all that. And Job has called out, uh, so far, you know, you're the mocker. You guys are mocking God. By taking the stand for God. You have taken a piece of duct tape and put it over across God's mouth. And you've been doing the speaking. He will surely reprove you if ye do secretly accept persons. And James speaks about that. If you look at a man, he, he got gorgeous gay clothing. Oh, you're my friend. You're so wonderful. And a guy who's a bum. He, oh, get away from me, dumb people. James says that's a sin. And what, what, what the idea here is Job, you just look horrible. Everything is just horrible in your life. You're miserable. You're not that rich man we don't know anymore. And you, you're, you're, you're not that man in the, in the gates. And, you know, so we can downcast you. Look at us. We're healthy, bright, well, we got money. We, we didn't lose everything. Shall not his, God's excellency, make you afraid? Evidently not. There are people all over the world today, 2018, and all over the place from, from man's time. They get up in a pulpit, they get up and speak in the name of God. Falsehood, lies, deceit, treacherously, sins. And they don't fear. Now they get the congregation to fear the, the preacher, the, whoever is behind that pulpit. There's no fear of God. There's no fear of God in the devil, Satan, Judas. In the Antichrist. You fear the Lord to begin the wisdom, the Bible said. And his God's dread fall upon you. Do you would you not just fall in terror if God really came to be? Every time we read in the Bible, a man of God, when God showed up, they fall down on their knees. <clears throat> Your remembrances are like unto ashes. Your, bo your bodies to bodies of clay. You know what you are? You're dirt. You know what God is? He's holy and right. What do you have to do to take God's stand? God has been before us. God is our creator. You're just a bunch of dirt. You don't even fear God. Shut up. I know you're not supposed to say shut up. Hold your peace. Oh yeah, there is a shut up. Let me alone. <laughs> Have you got where, where Job's stand, well, sitting right now? You know where Job's attitude is? He just wants them to leave. 
<laughs> yeah, that I may speak. Remember, Job spoke in chapter 3, because this out of pain and anguish, maybe they're looking at him weird or whatever. He just, you, you ever do that? You're just in life, you just, I gotta say something. I gotta get it off. I, gotta get off. I mean, if you go in the backyard, you're, you're driving a car, you just gotta get off your chest. Alright? Get it out. You don't pay somebody, you just go somewhere alone, you just get it out. And then next thing you know, here comes three people or four people pop out from a tree or, alright, I will answer that. Job met with the Lord and Dingleberry show up. That I may speak and let come and let come on me what will. If God gets angry for me for whatever I say, let God deal with me, not you. Now, isn't that true? I mean, honestly, when when I wake up middle of the night and everybody's sleeping and the house is quiet. I, sometimes, I, you know, besides praying, sometimes I say, Lord God, what is between you and me and my sins that I ask the Lord, you know, what? and he shows me. And that's, you know what, Lord, it, just make sure you don't think I'm perfect and everything like that, because I do have those moments that I'm the wonderful, great I am. And God will come down and say, uh, excuse me, what about that? And if these guys would shut up, I know I'm not supposed to say that. I ain't going to say it. You don't like it. That's stuff. You know, these guys would shut up. You know what God would come to speak, Job? This is the problem. But Job has never had that peace. And we're going to get to the fact that maybe these guys just one after another have been battling. And the most important thing you need to do as a Christian is you need to get off with the Lord alone. Jesus said, go into a prayer closet with yourself alone. And let the Lord speak to you. You know, the worst thing I have seen when you're witnessing to people and you've got a public ministry is when they got friends. Even when we have a free table at the, at the flea market and, you know, we're dealing with a guy and he's looking at the stuff, he's interested, and then the spouse or the friend says, hey, come over here, look at this. You know what you want to do right there? You want to take that friend and throw him in the Atlantic Ocean. Because you were getting somewhere, weren't you? Sometimes friends are a hindrance. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? Why well, I'm in charge. Though he, God, slay me, if God kills me, if that's the next step, I think that would have been the next step. <laughs> because what else could a Joe what else could have God done to Joe? I don't finances, family, health. <clears throat> Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Now look at that faith in God. Look at that faith in God. And with all the troubles and anguish that we come from, can we say, I'm going to trust God no matter what? It's hard. That's a hard statement. But I will maintain my own ways before him. There's the trouble. There's the sin. And we will learn to find out as we're finding out with Job now. Slowly and surely, Job's sin is self-right. God, you kill me, I'm going to trust you, but I'm doing right. That's Job's problem. He, he just said, listen, look what he said. Oh, word. He says, hold your peace. He said, I take my flesh from my teeth. Though he slay me, yet I'll trust in him. Okay. I will maintain my own ways, no matter what the Lord does. I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. That's a sin. Verse 16. He, God, also shall be my salvation. Look at that. No law, no gospels. No salvation this side of Calvary. And Job says before the law, in the time of Jacob and Esau and their grandchildren, Job says, God is my salvation. And you find that throughout the book of Psalms. Even in a, in a frame of Job being by salvation, by works, and the books were open and men were judged by, by their works, 
Job says, on top of it all, it is God that saves my soul. For he shall be my salvation, for a hypocrite, that's the first time that word shows up, shall not come before him. I wonder who he's calling hypocrite. <laughs> Job, you're harsh. A hypocrite is a man that says something that does something else. He does not live true to the words out of his mouth. Has that not been these three friends? Hear diligently my speech. Listen to my word. And my de declaration with your ears. Here's a declaration in the Bible. Behold now, I have ordered my cause. I know that I shall be justified. Oh, Job, you think you've done right. Who is he that will plead will plead with me? Today it's the Lord Jesus Christ, our advocate, our mediator. For Job, there's no one. For now, if I hold my tongue, if I be quiet, I shall give up the ghost. If, if I don't say anything, if I don't get it off, I'm going to die. Now, this is not Job wishing to die. I, I'm going to be dead if I can't speak. Shut up. Let me talk. Job has more to say of his anguish. Of his anguish. Only, now he's going back to God. He's speaking to God. Only do not two things unto me. In the book of Proverbs chapter 30, he says these two things. Says, Let me not be rich so I can deny thee. Let me not be poor where I can steal and blaspheme your name. Job's two things are, Then will I not hide myself from thee. Proverbs 38 and 9. Withdraw thy hand far from me. God, quit beating me now. Doesn't that sound good? Which, is that not your plea? God, stop it! I've had enough. And somebody probably won't like, oh, you can't say that. No, Job did. What if what if you said that prayer? Now the Bible says, you know, we ask not because uh, we, we seem not because we ask not. And God wants us to pray. God wants us to ask. ask, seek not. What if you got to heaven and you found oh, God, why did I suffer all this time? All those imbeciles kept telling you, you don't ask God to do that. All you had to do was say, Lord, I've had enough. Help me, please. I'm taking care of you. And quote that verse in James. You didn't ask. You didn't ask. Job's asking. And let not thy dread, the fear, make me afraid. Now, Job fears God, Job 1 and 2. But Job is fearing God with the wrath and judgments upon him. Can it get any worse than this? <laughs> That's a different kind of fear. Then call thou God, and I will answer, chapter 40. Or let me speak and answer thou me. Ooh. You know Job said, God, you listen to me, then give me answer. Now, I'm not going to put Job as this, this man that's doing right all the time. But that self-righteous keeps coming out. Answer to me, God. Now, he's not that Pharisee. Well, you see that guy over there? You see his sins? That's not Job. Be, merc be merciful to me, a sinner, God. Pound this chance, and this is why you should be merciful to me. So he wants God to quit. And call thou and I will answer. Or let me speak and answer thou me. Chapter 40 coming up. 23. <coughs> Excuse me. This is what I do. How many are my iniquities and sins? That is good and proper to do. Get up alone. It's quiet. Say Lord. What's bothering you about me? And he'll answer you. I guarantee because all have sinned. 
All have sinned. Make me to know my transgression and my sin. And by the time we close with the book of Job, we're going to find out what that sin is. Self-righteous. You know why people won't ask that? Because they love their sin and they know God's. that's going to be the first one. You take that sin that they love, oh God. <coughs> no, I'm not going to ask because I know which sin he's going to point right out. You know? I know I got a problem with patience. I said, well, ask the Lord that I'm not even finished. I haven't even got to the question mark God said patience. And I'm not going to tell you the other things. None of your business. But God will answer you. If you are seriously seeking God to do right, and you ask the Lord, what are my sins? He's going to answer you. But don't ask like James said, oh, oh okay, Lord, bye, have a good day, He'll see you later, and without trying to do anything about it. That's like going to a car lot, and you're just asking that dealer questions and fun questions. And you had no intention of buying that car. You just wanted to waste time. Wherefore, hidest, that's the first time that word shows up, hidest thou thy faith. Now what is the application, the implication here? God has shown up to the men in the Bible, in the Old Testament. He's going to show up in chapter 40. Job has seen God. So I think you can come to the conclusion. Now, how did he see God? I don't know. Probably the angel of the Lord or one of the angels. Or heard the voice of God as you read through the Old Testament. That don't happen today because we have a complete Bible. I think it was Martin Luther one time sitting in his room and Jesus showed up in his room. He took his inkwell and threw it at Jesus. Because <laughs> that's not today. So the implication is Job, how rotten he is. God has shown up to him. And holdest me for thy enemy. Because of your sins. <laughs> And your God is not your enemy. Job doesn't know Job 1 and 2. Satan is his enemy, remember? God has done all he can do to protect Job. Okay, but do it, but don't touch him. All right, you can do it, but spare his life. And sometimes, though it's wrong to blame God, it's wrong, and it's wrong to blame the devil, you will say, God, why are you doing this to me? And I believe we should confess that as a sin. And even when we say the devil's fault, I think we need to confess that as a sin too. Because we could be wrong. And when we're wrong, we sin. Wilt thou break a leaf driven to and fro? You know, that leaf that's blown around, you're going to break that leaf? I'm innocent, Lord. Okay, Joe. Will thou pursue the dry stubble? You know that tumble weeds? Are you going to go after that tumble weed? You're going after me. What about, hey, I just picture a leaf rolling by. See that leaf? You don't break that leaf, but you sure broke in me. There goes that, that uh, uh, tumble weed. Go after that, God. <laughs> go after that tumble weed and leave me alone. Please. Put the Bible to life. <laughs> For thou, God, writest bitter things against me. The book of Job. That's not written yet. And maketh me to possess the iniquities of my youth. I don't know, maybe it's true. Thou puttest my feet also in the stocks. Those are things that, you know, they're handcuffed for the feet. Job is sitting there on a, on a garbage heap on ashes, scraping himself with a broken pottery. He may not be able to go anywhere. And me, and uh, I've always figured the bathroom cause. <laughs> Him trying to get up and go to the bathroom. Not, uh, not a pretty picture. 
but that's me. And Lucas, that's the first time that shows up, and narrowly, that's the first time that shows up. Unto all my path. Lord God, you set this this narrow. Where have you heard that one before? Stray is a gate that leads to life, and the few that enter therein. You better believe our life is on the narrow. If we want to do right with God, because the world and the devil is wide open. And if you are on that narrow path, amen, glory to God, rewards. Thou settest a print upon the heels of my feet. Now, if you can't find the, the cross-reference on that one, of the Lord Jesus Christ, those nail prints for our sins, And he, as a rotten thing, consumeth, that's the first time that word shows up, as a garment that is moth-eaten. You know what the human body is? You know what we are, God? We're just like a, 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 a moth in a closet having a field day. No one ever catches it. And when you finally open up that closet door, all your wardrobe is gone. And a very happy, fat moth. And he's likened death to that moth. Death is just so happy because we're going to die. Graveyards get filled. And it's funny, I've never seen a graveyard get too filled, ever. It's amazing. I have never seen a graveyard ever been closed. And I've been, we've been in, and I've been in old ones up in New England. And it just seems like it just stops halfway full. <laughs> that moth is like, hey, I can take more. And that's what Job's looking at. I mean, Job's not wishing death, but Lord, I'm going to die. What accomplishment is this going to have? 